Hey everybody, how you doing? As you are getting ready to work on completing the final draft of the summary and reaction paper, there's just a couple of things I want to go over to make sure that you have the best possible product. Uh, <clears throat> I know that you have a list of instructions and things uh, that give you some of those overviews. I, I know you have that. and I know I've talked about some of these things, but I just want to give you a few things in particular that I will be looking for. Uh, because again, this is like the first time, sorry, with the camera moves. Uh, this is the first time that, you know, you have uh, submitted a paper to me. This will be the first time I grade one of your works. And so I just want to talk about some things that I will be definitely looking for to make sure that you have included inside of your paper. Okay. So first off, let's start with the title. Um, I, and, and I noted this on some of your, uh, some of the papers that I gave back to you as feedback. Uh, first off, the title should be something more than just the assignment name or more than just the name of the article that you are reviewing. Um, the title is the first place where your audience starts to get a sense of what this paper is about and how it's going to be presented. Um, for instance, um, I live here in Evansville. OK, we have a Texas Roadhouse. So if I look at the name without knowing anything else about it, it says Texas. That implies certain things to me. It's going to be big portions. It's going to be grilled out. It's going to be cowboy type fare. And Roadhouse gives that sense of loud and body and, and, and kind of, you know, you go in for a good time, right? Well, we also have this restaurant called Biagi's. And again, without knowing anything about it, it's like, okay, that's, that's a, that sounds like an Italian name. It, it kind of sounds very Italian. I bet it's going to be pasta or something. And it's just like a name. So it has a little bit more classy feel to it, right? And, and so the title that you use is the first time that your audience interacts with you. So think about a title that really gives a sense of what you are doing and how you are doing it. Uh, for instance, um, you know, Maybe you read the article about uh, uh, we need to eat more insects, right? And so, you know, maybe your title is, you know, something like cricket fricassee, anybody? Uh, which gives that sense of like, okay, insects, eating them, who's in, maybe making those kind of assumptions like, hey, maybe this is something we should be eating. So, again, think about the title and uh, make sure that it is something that really draws in the audience and helps us see first how this is going to be approached. <clears throat> um, we also have the introduction. And again, I know you guys have had some instruction about introduction, um, and, and we've talked about this a little bit too. The introduction, I really should see three things in that. Um, I need to see the uh, some sort of attention getter that gets us drawn into the, the paper. Remember, in the real world, when you leave academia, no one ever has to read your stuff. No one has to read it. And so you always wanna to try to think of what is the thing I can do that could help draw people in, that will help get people's attention and make them want to read the rest of this. You know, I'm sure some of you have had that moment where you've started a Netflix show and one minute, two minutes in, you're like, nah, I'm out, right? Click, go to the next thing. That's that attention getter, right? We draw people in. This is also, again, like the title, the first kind of place where we really get to see you. And this is where you start to show the tone of the paper and what you're about. Also in the introduction, there must be the title and the author's name if there is one, okay? We have to have that in here. Now, uh, you can bring up that title and that author again later. That's fine. You can expand on the author and give their credentials later. That's fine. That doesn't need to be in the introduction. But we do need to make sure that we are early on setting up what text we are dealing with. And then we end with a strong thesis statement. And that thesis statement really tells us what the goal of this paper is. Now, some things about the thesis statement that I always like to remind people, the thesis statement should not include the word I, like I am going to summarize and react. No, um, I feel, okay, uh, let's avoid the word I in the thesis. Let's make sure that we don't include that, okay? Um, 
most of the time in most of your papers you won't be able to use i anywhere in the paper now this one is a summary and reaction because it's your personal reaction we can kind of get away with the i in the introduction and in the sum or in the uh, reaction part <clears throat> but generally speaking we try to avoid that it's always a good idea to avoid the i in th in the thesis some other things to think about when you think about the thesis it should not state the obvious okay um this is a summary, or I'm going to summarize and react. Let's let's avoid those kinds of just straight out obvious type statements. Um, it should give us a sense of where you stand on the issue. You know, interesting, engaging, intriguing, scary, whatever. So you include something that indicates or suggests where we're going with the summary and the reaction. <clears throat> we want to try to avoid making people angry. Like, after reading this, you'll see why you're wrong, right? You set the wrong tone for your paper. <clears throat> and I also like to avoid um, setting up an expectation, right? Like, this essay will blank. Avoid this kind of line in the sand, like, this is what I'm going to do. <clears throat> because what happens then, is your the rest of the time your audience is trying to figure out okay did he do that and they're not looking at the content so much it's this kind of they said they were going to do this did they do it um and it, it's kind of like a test almost to see if you did right you know like when you go into um you know like when you go into a, a gas station and says we have the widest selection of sodas you're like really let's see here you know, and you start kind of counting around and stuff you start judging people so you want to avoid those kind of obvious and those kind of direct statements and things that might anger the audience, like you're speaking directly at them. <clears throat> uh, in the summary, uh, once you get into the summary of the paper, obviously the goal is to retell the paper. We've talked about this a little bit before, talked about the article. Um, you want to give the big main points. You don't need to give every single point. You don't need to give every single example. Um, you know, it's it's the highlights. It's the big picture stuff. You really only have a paragraph. So you need to make sure that it's fairly concise. But you don't you need to make sure that even though I'm not giving all the information, I'm not giving all the examples, all the points, I do have to give enough that people understand what it is. And I should be able to get a sense of what it's like before I get into reading it myself. OK, so you are trying to wet our whistle a little bit, trying to get us kind of excited about reading it a little bit, giving us that kind of overview. But we don't need to give everything. And so there's a balancing act there. You know, if you think about a movie, you know, do you need to tell every single detail? Do I need to give it away? Maybe. No, probably not, because that wouldn't make it very interesting for me. But I do need to give a sense of what it's like. And and in this one, it's kind of especially important because since I haven't read the article, the reader, I've read all the articles, but like I, the reader, haven't read the article, and then I'm getting ready to read your reaction. If I don't understand what the article is about, I might not understand why you had that reaction. So there is a balancing act. So make sure the summary hits those main points, but doesn't need to give every single detail away. Uh, the reaction. Again, there's no right or wrong answer. I don't expect like I re I see somebody read blank article. Don't blame the eater. So then I expect this one particular reaction. That's not true. Uh, your reaction is your reaction. And whatever your reaction is, is totally fine. As long as you justify it and explain it and back it up and validate it from the text. And what that means is, is that you go back to the text and say this part here is what made me feel that way, right? Like my reaction was, I was really disgusted. For instance, if you look at this paragraph when they talked about blank, okay? Now, you wanna make sure that you make that connection back. That justifies your reaction. It doesn't matter if you like it or don't, that's not the issue. The issue is you can prove why you do or don't. You know, if you think about like uh, um, my, my daughter, she watched all the episodes of Friends. And I just can't do it. I didn't like it the first time and I don't like it, you know, now on stream, whatever is it on Netflix or whatever it's on now. But I, I'm not impressed by the show. 
that's not a legitimate answer. Okay. I don't like the show because the characters are overly fake. Everything's exaggerated. Uh, it definitely didn't age well. The jokes now are totally not okay in today's society. I can point to reasons why, right? That's your goal. Your reaction is your reaction. That's totally fine as long as you make sure that you can identify what makes you feel that way. Um, some just some last points for you. Obviously, don't forget to put this in MLA or APA style. Uh, if you need help with that, uh, please let me know. There is some guides and some tutorials in our in our work and our uh, little seagull book. Uh, there's plenty of templates and things online, um, and there's plenty of places where you can get that. You can also like, hey, Wells, I need some help with this, and we can get you set up on that as well. Uh, that is a place, when you think about like you go to your other classes, uh, that's a place where a teacher who isn't English will quickly mark off like, oh, hey, no, it doesn't look like this, right? They haven't read the paper. They already taken a letter off because it's not in style. Uh, always think about that presentation. Remember, we talked about that. Uh, some other things when we talk about presentation is really that editing and revision. You know, you can have a great, great message, but if it's not presented well, there's spelling errors, grammar errors, uh, you know, style issues, things like that. It's not presented well. And an apathetic audience or an audience who wants to not deal with the information, they're going to look for things like that. And they can say, oh, no, no, no look at that. Check out, right? Their, their presentation is bad. Their ideas must be bad, too. Uh, so you really want to uh, make sure that the presentation enhances the message and make sure that it really helps present, showcase, deliver that in a strong way. Uh, some things to do. Obviously, we had the video. I, I put up the video earlier about editing and revision, giving you some tips. Uh, you do have access to tutor.com. That is on the uh, sidebar in Ivy Learn. Uh, you do actually have a, an exercise where you use that coming up, uh, but that's a free service that um, the uh, college gives to you. So please take advantage of that. They are really good. Um, and you can, you know, for, for as much or as little as you want to get from them, you can. Um, I also recommend just, just run spell check. I mean, you know, Google Docs is really good about checking that. Uh, Microsoft Word is really good about checking that. Run that spell check. Run that grammar check. It's not perfect, but it's going to catch a lot of things that you might not have. And especially something like uh, Google Doc. Um, it's going to question a lot of things like, is this really what you want to say? Is this really what you want to do? Um, also with that too, uh, Grammarly, G-R-A-M-M-E-R-A-R-L-Y.com, Grammarly.com. If you're not familiar with this, this is a website in Chrome extension. Uh, so if you go to Grammarly.com, there's a place where you can just copy paste your paper into it and it will check it over for you for free. Now, uh, the free version um, is kind of an enhanced uh, spell check, grammar check, okay? It does that and does a little bit more. There is a paid version. You know, that is up to you. I am not making anybody pay for that. Uh, if you are using uh, the Chrome browser, uh, which is what I use, uh, there's also an extension on their website or through the App Store, and you can download that especially if you're using Google Docs, it's super awesome because it will check your work as you go. Now, I will warn you that the if you do use Grammarly as the extension, um, it sometimes gets a little bit tedious, like it's trying to spell check all the websites you're in, uh, like you're on some form, you know, you're trying to submit some form on a website, it's trying to grammar check that as well, uh, or autocorrect things for you. So sometimes it, it does get in the way, you do have to be kind of careful how you use it. Uh, but those, uh, you know, either the extension or the website, those are both really good places that you could get some help. Um, guys, I'm excited to see what you come up with. Uh, don't forget the final draft of this is due uh, at the end of the module that for module um, uh, for this module, module three, that'll be due Sunday night on the, let's see, that will be June the 26th. Okay, it'll be due that night. Uh, definitely start with the feedback that I've given you on your half draft, build from there. 
If you have any questions, make sure you're reaching out and ask me. Good luck, everybody.